tapered off a little bit and then back to the normal, you know, routine. And so um, I think this is, uh, the, the Lord is calling us to himself. I mean, uh, we hear that in what you're saying. The Lord is calling us to be faithful. That's what I'm hearing you, each one of you are saying that, um, uh, to trust in the Lord. And, and so we continue down this path. Uh, yeah, no, we don't like what's going on. We don't like to be in this situation. Um, we don't know how long it's going to last. And um, But the Lord is still calling us to walk this path with him and trust him. And, and I, I get how certain decisions have to be made. Um, it's amazing. I mean, it is amazing how the, the church is not going to have Easter publicly. Wow. That's, that's absolutely mind boggling and, and don't understand what we're going through. Um, but I do know that um, signs like this, us getting together in a Bible study, is is a beautiful sign. Me seeing the Holy Father yesterday uh, in his message was a beautiful, uplifting sign. And uh, but the starkness of St. Peter's Square was like, yeah, there's a reality uh, to the whole situation that's going on. And so, is it? Um, uh, could is is this the end of times? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps, but I do know that that we this is a time for conversion and a time when the Lord is calling people uh, to Himself, and He's calling us to Himself to go for us to go deeper in our relationship with Him in whatever situation that is. And so, uh, some people are are. We, we, just along with other people, can be distracted, um, or we don't have to be distracted. We continue to focus and have our regular schedules. Uh, I think that's what the Lord is, is calling us. Yes, have I distracted myself to some degree? Yes, but it, there's other things that have been profitable. So we continue to use each day in the best way that we can to help us to grow um, to set those regular schedules, to, um, to have that regular prayer time with the Lord, to pray those rosaries, to make those spiritual communions. And um, that, that's what we're called to do, is, is uh, to read Scripture. Um, even reading tomorrow's uh, uh, Sunday uh, Scriptures, today is Saturday, so those will come tomorrow it'd be great to begin to prepare to think about those i do think that the lord is is bestowing a lot of graces upon us and uh even in the hardest times uh i think that uh many graces are bestowed and there's actually clarity and being able to hear his word can come and um, i think that's what he's doing now some will some will choose and follow the Lord, and others uh, will continue to try to uh, distract themselves and go about whatever they want to do. And so evil is trying to capture minds and hearts, and the Lord is also trying to capture mind and hearts. And so we continue to do the things that we know are helping others to... Um, to strengthen them in, in, in their walk. And so, um, you know, I, I've been so edified in the fact that just to kind of do these video conferencing, I've, I'm very new to this, uh, but it's very uplifting for the fact is that we can come together and um, uh, we would have ne it would have never happened uh, previously. Uh, let's be real, but we're forced to do it and it works. Yeah. It's and it helps. We and really he, would have been alone. Yeah, uh, these, yeah these, moments, these moments are, are really blessed. And so, um, again, um, continue to uh, keep focused on the Lord and ask him, come to him and say, okay, Lord, 
um, I, I'm not sure what's going on here, but can you explain it to me? And I really think uh, he's really calling each one of us to come to him. And so, uh, and so that's, that's what the word has been in my heart and, and what I feel the Lord is, is calling me to. And just like he called Peter in this verse, he's, he's calling each one of us. And so just trying to quiet myself down enough to be able to, to uh, listen to him. And so I just put that word out for, for all of us. Thank you so much, Father Leo. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. You mentioned something, Father, and it reminded me of We Discover the Saints, Chapter 18, Mother Teresa, about schedule, and I just want to share with you that paragraph. Go ahead. Um, okay. Mother Teresa was a champion of truth, beauty, and goodness. She didn't have to wake up each day and remind herself to be so. She had a powerful set of routines and rituals that she practiced with unerring discipline. <laughs> These daily routines and rituals were habits of the heart, mind, body, and soul, and they kept her grounded and focused. They reminded her of what mattered most and protected her from getting distracted, seduced, and mesmerized by shiny illusions. And um, he concludes Matthew Kelly with a series of questions. What are the daily routines and rituals that kept you grounded and focused on what matters most each day? Do you notice the difference between the days when you are faithful to those habits and other days when you neglect them? Mm -hmm. So when, when I read it the other day, I just thought like, oh, how fitting it is for this time. Mm -hmm. Like a reminder, just be faithful to your routines as much as possible. So when you said it, I just thought of reading it now. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I find that very important as well because the time is a little bit more my own. Yeah. So I can just kind of let it wander through the day or I can plan. And, and I, so I, I plan too. I mean, it doesn't always happen because other circumstances wind up affecting me, but it really helps to, to not be at a spot where, well, what should I do now? Or should I, you know, to, to keep occupied. It was so beautiful yesterday. Uh, uh, Susan, I was, I was out with the Lamb Cafe yesterday. We still do that. Uh, in front of St. Anselm's Church, we were yesterday from 12 to 1, and uh, at 1 o'clock, I got your uh, text, Susan, as I was getting in the car to leave, and the other two were getting into the truck to leave, and um, it was about the Holy Father, and I kind of remembered it vaguely, but I was able to, to tap your, uh, on what you sent me, Susan, and it, it started right at that moment that I got in the car and I listened to it as I was driving on my phone and I had to go to the bank. So, uh, and there was a long line at the bank. So I got in the back of the line and I listened to it. Then I could watch it on my phone. And it was just, it was so powerful. And the moment I pulled up to the window, it was two o'clock and it was ending. And I thought, wow, praise oh, God. Wow. Oh, that, it was just like from from minute, right on the button at one, and, uh -huh, it, ended, uh -huh. it, and it ended right at the button at, at two. But I wanted to, I mean, the Lord's in charge of our day if we, we really try to plan and then he'll rearrange things, you know. But um, I, one of our missionaries, one of the women at, at the residence for the women the other day, she was um, um, making some kind of Irish... Irish bread or something, and she was uh, vide videoing it because it was rather unique, I guess. And she was going to put it on YouTube, so she had the, her phone situated in the kitchen, and and uh, so apparently one of the other land missionaries walked in and saw her doing that, narrated that to the rest of us, and you know she reached, she did all the mixing and everything, and at a certain point, she tells the on the uh, the YouTube she speaks. Uh, and says, well, now we have to wait an hour for this <laughs> to set. And she said, during this hour, you call somebody to see how they're doing, to tell them uh, you're thinking of them and that you're praying for them. That's what you do during this hour. Mm, and I uh -huh. thought, wow, she just made everything part of her mission. Even just cooking that, she incorporated 
what we're all to do. There's some way that we can be still of service of others. Yes, we want we want to, you know, focus on Jesus. But Jesus is saying, okay, focus on those in need. Also, you can't you can't go and serve in the hospital. You can't do a lot of things. But there might be something you can do, even from your house. You know, so I've been kind of conscious of that of calling, you know, some of my relatives that I haven't talked to in a long time, and um, telling them about about um, word on fire for the mass or, or something like that. And gee whiz, they get back to me and thank me for it. But it's just, it's like an opportunity yeah. also for us to witness to the Lord, not just be, well, of course, nobody's just saying be fed by him, but, but I mean, we, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's a combination that's, uh, uh, that, that I believe the Lord is calling us to also. It's true. I'd like to just add on that note, the 12 step programs are continuing. They're meeting uh, in smaller groups because they got chased out of the parking lots at the churches. And a brave priest said, if you have the key and I don't know about it, go ahead. And so now they're taking it to our homes. They are having open pit fires and sitting, you know, the, the prescribed distance from each other. But for them, this is, you know, they have a disease that they're much more aware of and afraid of than a coronavirus. So I, I give those guys a lot of credit. Um, Matt Talbot is in the uh, Franciscan Book of Saints, God bless him. And with his spirit, they're keeping these meetings going and, and even meeting more so because of the stress and things going on with them, with their jobs. And then in New Jersey, um, law offices are essential, and my husband, whether it was or not, would have us keep going to work. So we've been working, and I've, it's been so, so busy. We get the elderly calling, so frightened, so anxious, and I hear the news behind them, and they all want to either redo their estate planning and this and that. So we have them come in, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. They, they come with their masks and their gloves. And I think they really come because, um, God bless my husband, is such a calming and joyful soul. I deal with them on the phones trying to keep them calm and, um, and positive. But I'd also like you to pray for me because I even have family members. There are some people, I say, that aren't happy unless they're miserable. And while I am <laughs> kind of proclaiming joy and positive and I'm not afraid, I'm going, you know, we're going to heaven, you know, there were things that, that bless the things that sent them to heaven sooner. Um, my daughter has like cut me off, you know, and I, I have to like, you know, visit my grandchildren now online. It's kind of funny and, and we have plan A and plan B, but there are people that, um, and, I, and I feel like, I, and I don't like to always go there, but I feel like Satan, like you said, uh, is, is really having a field day with this and gripping those souls that are not practicing and do not have that faith. And um, so it, it's interesting. Um, who wants to believe and others that are rejecting that. So I think, you know, as we go, this is an opportunity to be a light. I told one mother on the phone yesterday who wanted to do the whole family planning. I said, you know, as Christian mothers, we're called to be the peace and, and the light of Christ. And, um, you know, not to, when you call your family, not to have that anxiety, that, that stress, that this is just a wonderful opportunity to practice what we um, have been reading about and learning about in formation. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Susan. Tom, just to add you to Father, your point. Oh, Father, go ahead. Just a, a, a thought that has also been coming to me. As much as the evil one likes to uh, take the opportunity to, on these times, he hates that other opportunities are happening where people are drawing closer to the Lord and he hates that. Sure. And so, yeah. So, so recognize he's, he's working hard to draw people away, but at the same time, he, he recognizing that some people are, are, are working even harder to draw closer to the Lord. And so, uh, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's amazing times. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Tom, just to add to your point, uh, last week, um, 
when we had our last masses, last public masses on Sunday, uh, after we have we have nine o'clock and we have we had eleven thirty mass, and there is a final prayer that the priests pray silently. It's called farewell to the altar. Okay, it's a farewell to the altar, and usually the priest says it silently, and we most of us say it silently, but that day. He asked that we all pray it in a loud voice with him. And we were all choking and crying while we were singing. I'm just going to say it and then I'll, I'll, I'll make the point that I'm trying to see. I leave you in peace, O holy altar, and I hope to return to you in peace. May the offering I have received from you be for the forgiveness of my fault and the remission of my sin, that I may stand without shame or fear before the throne of Christ. And that's the most difficult part. It says, I do not know if I shall be able to return to you again to offer another sacrifice. I leave you in peace. And I, I remember after the nine o'clock mass, I was just spending time in adoration and I was crying out to the Lord. I'm like, why are you allowing this to happen? Like, have we been taking you for granted in the Eucharist and in the sacraments that you want us to have a greater appreciation for your presence in our life? And he reminded me of uh, Sister Danielle's talk, Christy. Sister Danielle is is uh, the pastoral associate at uh, Christie's Parish, and I know her from the Walking with Purpose Bible Study. She says when, when the priest or the Eucharist, the extraordinary minister says the body of Christ, and we respond with amen, that amen means I will become the body of Christ for the world. And he reminded me of that at that moment, and he was like, do you think you have been really the body of Christ the way I want you to be? And it hit me so much because we might think we are, we think we're doing enough, but the truth is we're lacking so much to be able to do the right thing, lacking charity, lacking the virtue. So I just felt like maybe this time is really a time for us to really reflect on it more, to appreciate what we have or what we had, because we, we were able to go to mass every day and some countries they go once a year. And I, I hope that this appreciation will make us more faithful and will radiate Christ's life through us in a more powerful way by just being more in tune with him and being Christ to others. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you, Maurice. Any other sharings before we conclude? No. What a, what about if we conclude with Divine Mercy Chaplet? We offer it for all those people dying. We offer it for us, God's mercy on us, and on the whole world, for conversion, for repentance. I want to turn the laptop toward our shrine. So, and I will remove the mail of the uh, relic of the cross that we have. Let me see if that really is. Uh, I will do it. So this is a relic that we have at home that has the true cross in it, piece from the true cross. That's why we have it covered with a veil, but now since we're doing it and we're leaving, we'll just have it up there. Uh, let me do one thing.